Welcome back. This is CEO Teacher Season 2 and I am your host Daud Waid. In fact, you can search me on the Twitter with the handle CEO Teacher and I call myself the Growth Mindset Coach but that's for another day. Today I want to talk to you about something that I personally have undergone and perhaps one of the memories etched out is how my daughter struggled in pain. We were devastated when she was diagnosed with an illness where we had to undergo the MRI test. And to see a three-year-old princess go through this entire catastrophic MRI with the loud sounds to be sedated is trauma and agony I hope no parent goes through. But what that moment taught us was how we forget the empathic, you know, the side of being kind when you are ill. A little word when you are down goes a long way to improve your spirit. How often we miss those moments and we make situations around us when we are down, when we are ill, we are going through a divorce or we are having a financial crisis and one shoulder, one pat, one word of encouragement, one whatsapp message to cheer up makes a world of a difference to us. So think of those people who are going through radiation and oncology or even a fractured limb and have to spend time in the hospital away from home, how sad and devastating it would be. Well, a great leader finds the brightest spot in the darkest day. That's exactly what people have done. The civil rights movement or you as an ordinary teacher in a classroom. No teacher is ordinary if she can seize a moment. Great business leaders actually thrive on these moments. Take the story of Doug Dates. Doug Dates is an industrial designer from General Electric, GE, one of the largest companies in the world. Doug spent two years working on a new MRI machine, the same MRI machine that I was talking about a little while earlier. And he was proud of his innovation. He was proud of the machine he had done and he went like he said in his own TED talk like a proud papa going to see his baby when the machine was installed in the hospital. All his hallucinated idea of the glory and the pomp of his new MRI machine did completely shatter when he saw the first patient, that young daughter of a couple came down the hallway for her MRI. The girl was crying. She was actually being dragged to the MRI machine. The father said up teen times to her, listen honey we spoke about it, you can be brave, it won't take long. But as soon as this little girl let's call her Diana, entered the room, Diana froze. That was a moment where Doug saw the room from the eyes of this girl. Imagine a little girl and as I see, I look at my own daughter, what does she watch? What does Diana see? As you are lying in this entire claustrophobic room with a giant warning sign, a magnet, an exclamation point, there is a warning which says no metallic object, there is a yellow and black tape as if it belongs to a CID crime scene with Pradyuman and and everyone around. The room is also dimly lit with fluorescent lights that are more befitting a dangerous nightclub than a hospital. And the shades, oh don't get me talking about the hospital shades, the curtains, the blanket, I don't know why hospitals are mortgages and mortuaries where you have only whites around. The atmosphere in short was dampening, disheartening and discouraging. And Doug said to himself, boy. That's the machine I've made. I actually have made a hole in an entire wall. He knew the experience of this little girl who will have to lie motionless for 30 minutes. And I did not even start talking about the loud alien hums as if a caterpillar is working on your body. You know, the caterpillar machines, of course. And what about the parents? Anguished, crying, terrified, cursing. And it was at that time Doug says, my heart broke. He realized that he has been focusing all the time on the machine, how to make it better, functionality, faster, sleeker, more powerful and not on the experience. You see, 80% of children undergoing MRI scan have to be sedated. My daughter was, 
Diana was because this is not a child's play and the sedation comes with risk. So this, he said, Doug, was the last time I was seeing a machine this way. He sat down with a team to rethink the experience a child has to go. And who did he bring? He got the leaders of a children's museum. He got design thinking experts from Stanford. He got teachers from a pre-primary school and I love that part. Wow, teachers have a great role to play. He got healthcare staffers who work with children and he got a team of nurses working in pedia- you know, pediatrics department. He had a conversation with them what a child's imagination could be in that MRI scanning for a while. What is a three kitchen chair and a blanket for a child? He asked. And for a child, give them three Legos. It could be a dinosaur, it could be airplane, it could be a castle, a spaceship, a truck, an automobile. So what if the MRI machine, Doug said, isn't an MRI machine, but say a submarine? And that is when he sat down and designed one of the reimagined the first scanner with Pittsburgh Medical Center and he called it a jungle adventure. So now in the hallway leading to the MRI machine, there were stickers placed which were looking like rocks and pebbles. The kids have to jump from one rock to another as if they are on a jungle adventure. The room was printed bright like an Amazon jungle. And there was a pond there with real fish which surrounded the machine. And the MRI table itself was now low so that a child can actually climb it. And the machine itself looked like a hollow out canoe. Oh my goodness. There is this canoe, a small boat and the kids were told that you will be rafting through the white waters of the Amazon jungle. So hold very tight and don't tip over, you'll fall in the water. And then the kids, the kids were like statues inside the canoe and they had an experience of their life. The another one was like a cable car and the cable car experience was every kid coming for a MRI scan was given a ticket for the car. And then the doctors would tell them, you see the cable car in the city, they're a little noisy. So ours are noisy as well, ignore the noise. And there was a pirate room adventure. So there was a monkey painted there and This entire was a pirate ship or there was a spaceship and this is where the little girl came back and perhaps it was not Diana this time but maybe someone else, maybe Betty and Betty comes and tugs on her mom's shirt and says, Mommy, Mommy, can we come back tomorrow? This is where Doug says he wept and he had transferred a terrorizing experience into a delight. Hats off to G's adventure series, you can google them and the Child's Hospital of Pittsburgh. One of the amazing things that happened is the sedation. Remember I told you 80% children were to be sedated? Now the numbers dropped to 27%. And in fact, for the shorter scan, only 3% children were to be sedated. The children's moment of anxiety, lying down on a sterile table into a threatening looking monster had been eliminated. Earlier, it was allowed taking around 10 to 20 minutes for a scan. Now it took four minutes. Less the number of scan, less the time exposed to radiation. This is an amalgamation, a victory of smart technology and concern experience that we have. Well, this is such a powerful story that I only leave you with an experience. What have you done with any dreadful experience your students are going through in your school? I know my cousin's daughter who has this anxiety and panic attack before every examination in her school. The exam phobia. Why would you let a child through torture? I urge the principals, the CEOs, the leaders, the head coordinators in every school. Why would you let a child go through drama? You must be a sadist and I'm sorry if you are repeating the same experience that you hated as a child. Oh, I've seen people not care, concerned. Why can't some examination just be so much fun that the children look forward to the examination? As our Betty said, Mama, can we have an exam tomorrow as well? Think about what Doug did. Think about changing your classroom into an experience. Think about changing your lessons into some amazing threat. And that is what TREAT is all about. I leave you as CEO teacher, urge you, make those experiences meaningful and believe me school would never be the same place again 
This is Daud Waid. Thank you for listening to me in the second season of CEO Teacher. Until then, bye bye and have a great day.